Hello folks, uh, welcome to the next inverter update. Uh, it's been a pretty crazy weekend here, I've been uh, pretty much locked myself into the office here for the weekend trying to get this baby wor working. I uh, hit a couple of snags um, as usual down to my own stupidity. Uh, I ended up having to go around in circles a bit. Um, but the first thing that I can report is that my 5 amp gate drivers uh, that I'm experimenting with here for the 600 amp IGBT modules are working great. And in fact they were partially the cause of my main problem that pretty much held me up all day yesterday. It's kind of a, a silly but I might as well tell you guys, just I suppose for the kind of nerd hu humour. Um, at rest with the gate driver and the sensor card connected, the inverter draws about 300 milliamps uh, from 12 to 13 volts. Now, normally when you would run a test program on the gate drivers, that current would go to maybe five, six hundred milliamps uh, because it's taking energy to swing the gates of the IGBTs. Uh, but for some reason, every time that I would try to fire off the gate drivers, uh, the processor would reset. And I suppose with hindsight, uh, it's kind of obvious, but I ended up chasing ghosts pretty much all day yesterday. Uh, the penny dropped this morning when I looked at it with a fresh head. What was happening was is that I was using a 1 amp uh, power supply. <clears throat> so when the gate drivers kicked on, the power supply current limit kicked in, dropped the supply voltage below 7 volts for a very short space of, t of time. The microprocessor re reset and when it goes into reset it shuts off all of the gate drivers and of course that then let the current come back down and this was happening so quickly uh, that I basically didn't see it happening. Um, every time that I clicked the button on the PC to initiate the test program by the time the web page refreshed with the data from the controller it just looked like the thing shut itself back off. So, a bit of a moron moment there. Uh, so I changed over to a 4 amp uh, power supply this morning and uh, straight up. And um, looking at some scope traces of the gate signals, uh, I, could, I could find almost no trace of a Miller knee, which is very good, I think. Uh, using the HCPLA 3120 drivers on the uh, prototype inverter, there was a noticeable mi Miller knee on the uh, on the gate signals. But with these ACNWA 3190 parts, that seems to be largely absent. So we have a lot of testing to do uh, before we can, you know, call that a complete success. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to stop talking and I'm uh, going to bring you guys in for a close look here and we're going to spin some shafts, so stay with us. Now I know that at this stage my office looks more like a bomb site than a office, but i uh, been pretty much playing around with this thing here now today. Um, so what I've done is we have... Uh, I just let the gate driver board sit back a little bit here so I could get in to probe around the gate drive signals. Um, the procedure to test this inverter, or indeed anyone, um, pretty much first of all involves looking at all six of your gate drive signals to make sure that they're actually firing that they're at the correct voltage levels. Once that has been done, 
um, what you want to do then is to put a low voltage DC on the bus, uh, say 12 volts from a power supply with a low current limit set, say 1 amp. And uh, leaving your motor phases disconnected, uh, put a plain 50% duty cycle on all three of the transistors. And the reason that you would do that is you want to look at your DC bus current and make sure that it's absolutely zero. Because if there's any current being drawn, uh, it means that you're getting shoot through on the transistors, which is bad. So that will kill it uh, in very short space of time. So once we had that done, uh, I kind of uh, dragged up an old three horsepower industrial motor uh, that I had uh, that I've had out in the shed for years. Um, it's a just a normal uh, 2.2 kilowatt, 50 hertz uh, three phase motor. The shorting bars uh, can be set for 400 volts three phase or to 30 volts three phase. I've currently got them set up uh, for 230 volts, uh, just with some very flimsy uh, test leads connecting to three phase terminals on the motor to those on the inverter. The, over here, I have my ubiquitous. Uh, kind of 30 volt, 30 amp power supply uh, set up there, putting 25 volts uh, with a 10 amp current limit on it onto our DC bus. So, also got a scope set up here. Uh, I've got two probe sets on it. Um, what I've got is, I've got a differential probe uh, set up across two of the phases. I have a standard uh, just an X1 probe. Um, try and bring that around a bit. My everything's kind of chaotic here. Uh, but a standard X1 probe just on the number three IGBT. Uh, I think it's the top. Um, yeah, it's the top uh, transistor on that. And that pretty much we're now looking at the gate drive um, signal, which is oh, that's great. The scopes managed to do something weird. Uh, it's at minus 14.4 volts at the minute, which is close enough to minus 15 volts for me. So, at this point, uh, we don't have a throttle pedal connected up, nor do we have an encoder uh, set up on the motor shaft. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But enough uh, of me mousing off. Why don't we spin the damn thing up? So. What we can do in this case is, the computer is going to wake up for me, we've got our USB connected and um, our uh, web interface here is set up. Uh, so we're going to start the inverter in manual mode. So we have an inverter started. Uh, and confirm that that's in that mode, it's in manual run. So we're going to set 100% current. And uh, I'm going to set the slip frequency for 10 hertz. And in theory, when I press enter here, this thing will start spinning. Either that or it's going to go pop. There we go. So right now, our motor here is getting a 10 hertz uh, signal and is pretty much spinning at uh, what, whatever uh, shaft speed that that would equate to. Um, so I'm going to let you guys in a little bit closer to this. So first of all, I don't know if this is going to come out at all, but the scope is showing um, the gate drive signal for the top section of this transistor. Now these, these kind of cheap digital scopes don't really uh, lend themselves too much to um, to uh, this type of work. I should really have one of my analog scopes here. What I'm going to try and do is let you guys in on the actual signal itself. Well, why don't we just uh, we'll just stop it there? There we go. 
So this is my drive signal. This is a snapshot uh, of my drive signal on that transistor. Now we can kind of zoom in on that quite a bit and it's only when I get really in close on it uh, that we can see the Miller knee here. Um, so quite impressed with that. Um, but it's amazing these square wave signals, you know, they kind of look so nice here let's say in that kind of a situation but it's been able to zoom in on the flipping thing and see that you know I suppose what's our switching time is pretty good actually we're switching we're fully on in about what uh, it's 500 nano per division so we're fully on in two divisions uh, which is what one microsecond pretty good um, but just on that kind of a look there uh, you can see we've got a pretty nice um, drive signal so let's have a look at the differential probe across the actual motor here uh, let's see if we can get rid of that channel one and this is kind of really interesting if I can make it uh, kind of make it stop itself because this is what a synthesized uh, wave tends to look like. Let's see if I can do a stop on it here. Probably a way to do this better, but I'm just a bit lazy. This is our three phase signal. Uh, we can zoom, but we can let the time base go back out and you'll actually be able to see it when I slow everything down. Um, look like so. So we're drawing about 1 amp at 25 volts at the minute from our bus. And uh, if I can make this, I was going to say camera, it's more like it's my flipping telephone. Uh, let's see if we can get you guys in here a little bit closer. And we'll see there's our uh, there's our motor spinning away happily. So uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a bit of a good day for the inverter. Um, and it's also quite interesting to uh, to look at these industrial motors as well as possible um, candidates. But uh, I probably wouldn't have much torque, I would imagine. Well, it's got a bit. That's only with 25 volts on it. It's going to chew up my shoe, I think. Interesting. No, it's not exactly a dyno, but what the hell. Uh, so that's that's about the size of it, folks. We got a spinning motor here, and our uh, our gate drivers are doing what they should be doing. So I guess that's enough of me mouthing off. I'd better get back to work and uh, continue to build. So our next phase of the operation uh, will be to start assembling all of this up into something that we can use so kind of getting the amp seal connector and all that for the IOs rigged up and um, yeah but I'm really pleased with this it's, uh, it's a bit of a step in the right direction anyway I have been looking at encoders um, now for this application uh, well, let me backtrack a little bit. Most field oriented control uh, traction inverters require um, a two output um, encoder signal. So I think they're called quadrature or something like that. And uh, they, it creates, it basically, it basically outputs two uh, square wave signals at 90 degrees to each, each, each each other and uh, that's used for determining rotor position 
But in our setup here with the slip control, we just need a single uh, encoder, encoder signal. So obviously our Siemens motor has the quadrature encoder built in, so we just use one of the signals. And as we've seen in previous videos, that works very well indeed. Um, but for this little test motor here, um, encoders tend to be quite ex expensive. Uh, a couple of hundred euros seems to be tippy, typical. So I had a bit of a look around and I fired off a few eBay purchases for little simple optical uh, encoders. So hopefully um, one of those will turn up before too long. We'll be able to do full control of that motor on the ground there, which, or on the floor I should say, which would be quite interesting. But I've also ordered another uh, E46 Hall Effect throttle pedal that we'll be installing into the Panzer soon, which will uh, give us our throttle signal uh, to control the inverter. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of where it's at at the minute, folks. Um, oh dear. Yeah. <clears throat> joys of uh, the joys of R and D. So I will be back um, probably in about two weeks time or so and we'll have some more updates on this. Uh, it's a very interesting arena for me because uh, in a lot of ways I had looked at AC, mo at, at AC motors and inverters and stuff like that as being a bit of a been a bit of a bridge too far or a bit of a black art or whatever you want to call it but mostly thanks to Johannes's efforts with that uh, kit um, and a bit of perseverance on my behalf here um, I think we're actually going to uh, end, end up with a very nice uh, solution that we can employ hopefully uh, in future conversions as well as the Panzer so as always folks thanks for watching and we'll be back soon